wonderful world of YouTube. It's your host, Orange Beanie Guy. Welcome back to Bit by Bit, the podcast where we kind of try and talk about video games, though our ADHD mostly takes over. I'm here with, uh, Mitchell? Mitchell? You there? Yeah, Mitchell, he, uh, he couldn't make it today, so he left me on my lonesome to do this cast. So, uh, we're gonna try and do this solo. Uh, no promises that this is gonna come out really, really good, but I'll give it all that I got. But today, I wanted to talk about a genre of video game. I, I don't even know if you will consider it a, a, a genre. May maybe more of a love. Something that I really enjoy. And that's Dinosaurs. When the original Jurassic Park came out, it was the absolute coolest thing, or it may have came out before me, before I was born, I honestly can't remember, but just seeing Jurassic Park just explode in my universe. Universe? Yeah, that's that's what I fucking meant to say. Uh, just everything dinosaurs, shirts, fucking pillow sheets, fucking toys, everything in my life became dinosaurs for such a long period of the time. I remember sitting on the steps, like years of my life were spent on my steps leading to my basement, just playing with the Jurassic Park toys or, you know, the knockoffs that you can buy for a buck at Dollar Tree because, like I've mentioned a million times, I, I gotta live off a budget. But there are far and few between... Is that, is, that, is that the right word? Far and few? That doesn't make sense. Fuck it. Dinosaur video games. That's what I really want to talk about. There's not too many, and I just wish a really good dinosaur game could come out. Now, there's a couple that I'm going to be talking about today, but I would never label any of these as fantastic games. There, you don't ever see people on the internet raving about dinosaurs or a dinosaur game. Dinosaurs were the 90s. It's like the best way I feel like I can put it. Sure, we just had Jurassic World and they're coming out with... What is it now? It's like Jurassic World, The Lost Empire or something. I don't know. I I don't have much hope for it, but here I am getting off track again. Let's, let's talk about some dinosaur video games. Some that I love, some that I wish could happen. And before I even go any further, if you all know of any dinosaur games, any at all, that you think would perk my interest, please leave a comment down below. Send me an email, hit me up on Tumblr, or any of the other social medias that I have. Because I want to give them a try. I love dinosaur games. Literally, anytime I see a dinosaur on a box of a video game, I'm just all about it. And I pick it up, no prior research, and I gotta play it. But most of the time, that leads to some pretty shitty games. But starting off, I want to talk about a NES title that very few people, I believe, know about. Except for, you know... I'd say people are collectors, if anything. It's a game called Dino Wars, the destruction of... Oh my god, what is that name? Spondyl Spondylus. Spondylus, yeah, that's. I think that's the name. It's a title where it's... What's the right word? So you start out as a little man, right? You're a little man jumping around across the stage. It's kind of a platformer, but it's really fucking difficult. And basically, it's like a prequel stage to lead you to a dinosaur. But the dinosaur's not real, it's a giant robot, so imagine Gundam, but dinosaurs. But also keep in mind, this is the Nintendo Entertainment System era, so it's not really crazy, graphic-wise. So basically, you get to be a T-Rex for a short while, a robot T-Rex. And you march off to the right of the screen, it's like... That's your walk sound, that's what you get to listen to. There's like maybe two actual, I guess, soundtracks in the game, so you're going to have to get used to those because that's what you're going to be hearing for the next couple of hours. But essentially all you do in that game is march off destroying smaller dinosaurs, which, who, after you've destroyed, you can pick up their attachments. So let's say I'm walking to the right and there's like a robot triceratops. I'm like, oh sweet, I'm going to shoot him and he can give me a bazooka. Or like, oh... There's a robot, Coelophysis. I'm going to take him out, and he's going to give me, like, a tiny machine gun thing. Now, if I continue to kill those dinosaurs in succession, because it's not like endless waves of dinosaurs. They're strategically placed. And I believe they... Oh, no, they, they don't respawn, because as you walk to the right of the screen, you can't walk back to the left. But let's say I kept killing Coelophysis's. Coelophysis, if you will. And I kept picking up their weapon. Then you can continue to upgrade that weapon 
What starts off as one tiny minigun can end up as three. What starts off as a small bazooka can be a large one, and so on and so forth. But basically, once you march through the level as the robot T-Rex, you get to fight essentially a jumbo dinosaur, which I thought was always a little confusing because I was like, isn't the T-Rex... If, I know he's not the biggest dinosaur, but he's like one of the baddest. Do you think your mech would be a little bit bigger? But it always end up being like a... I don't even know. Like you'd see like some sort of Brachiosaurus or a, uh, what's what's the one I'm looking for? It's it's the dinosaur that's like running in herds that the T-Rex ends up killing. The fir the first Jurassic Park where like they all run and hide behind the log. Is that Coelophysis? I don't think that's Coelophysis. I can't remember. I used to be way into this, and I may have forgotten all those names. But once you've killed that giant dinosaur, you you go back to being a normal person. I thought that was the biggest flaw of the game. It's like, dude, why would why would you make me be a person in a game about dinosaurs? Like, I want to be the dinosaur. Dinosaurs are so awesome. When you're the little person, you have a stupid pellet gun that can maybe be a shotgun and shoot uh, two bullets in a fucking, like, 45-degree angle direction. But the platforming shit for that one's is stupidly hard. Why would I want to be that? I want to focus on the dinosaur gameplay. Personally, I don't think I ever beat this. I spent most of my time... Watching my older brother play this game, he, I guess, if you will, kind of maintained that love of dinosaurs because he also loved dinosaurs. So I'd watch him play this for hours and hours. And then, you know, when I started, you know, becoming capable, if you will, to play video games because, you know, you don't just pop out of the womb able to play video games. It takes some time, you gotta develop your skills. I I'd give a couple cracks at it, but like I said before, the platforming was super hard in that game, it's very, very precise, and my little, however year old I was, person, me, could not handle it, and I never ended up beating this game. And now when I went back to play it, again, on the Nintendo Entertainment System, for anyone else who has one out there will know what I'm talking about. You, like, put the NES game in and, like, close it and click the power button, and then it's like, the screen's pink. And I'm like, okay, well, let me try this again. And you, like, take it out, put it back in, and the screen's blue, and the screen's green, and just, like, keep changes, changing it. Now, that personally could be my fault, because I, everyone, everyone took out their games, their cartridges, and blew into them. He's like, this is how you fix them, because you're getting the dust out. Don't do that. It's actually really bad for your video games because you're basically just blowing moisture into your cartridge, which is eventually going to deteriorate, deteriorate, that's the word, over time. And I think that's what may have happened to this game. I really hope it's not the case because I would love to play this again now that I'm, I guess, an adult. I'd love to give this a second shot. I think my platforming skills are a little bit better and I really want to see the end of this game. I, I, specifically because it's dinosaurs, but you know, if anyone else has played this, leave a comment down below, let me know what you think about it. Go check it out if you have a NES, or one of those new, I think they, Nintendo released a while back, like the, oh it's a throwback NES, but you don't need the cartridges, and all these games are on here, and they just did the same thing with the SNES, which apparently already sold out before it went out, or something like that, that's ridiculous, I'd love to get my hands on one of them, but... I don't know if that's going to happen. Moving on to the next dinosaur game I'd like to talk about is Jurassic Park The Lost World. This was a PlayStation 1 title, which of all the dinosaur games I'm going to talk about probably is my favorite. So Jurassic Park The Lost World is the second Jurassic Park. I don't think you can compare it to the first one, but you know, that's that's neither here nor there. You jump into this game, awesome just a cut, uh, I want to say, not CG, what is it, oh no, it, oh shoot, I forgot what they called the cutscenes, ugh, damn, oh well, it's gonna come back to me, fuck the cutscenes, let's talk about the gameplay, you click game start, you begin the game as a Comsic Nathus, and I don't know if anyone knows what those are, but in Jurassic Park 2, they're the little miniature green dinosaurs that are all, like, chicken sized and lengthy, and they end up killing that one guy that tases one, and they like all swarm him, but though you never really see that he dies, it's just like a river of blood, but also, how the fuck can you get killed by all these tiny things that you could brush off, like, I, sure, you rolled down a hill and like, maybe broke a leg, but you could, you could probably fight these things off, I don't, I don't think the guy should have died, but that's, that's neither here nor there again, I'm getting off subject, god, I just love dinosaurs, you're playing as a dinosaur right away, there's no person, there's no mech, you are the dinosaur, and it's awesome, 
Again, it's another side scroller. Uh, 3D, I'll give it that. Much better graphics. And you're it, you're just kind of you're trying to get from A to B. It's not like oh, kill all the dinosaurs, but that's part of it. There are dinosaurs in their way, and you need to kill them to progress. But it's just basically get here, get there. Now the gimmick with this game is you kind of have it's like a predator prey meter I guess is like the proper way to say it and like one of the corners of the screen there's an eyeball and it starts off as green and it's circular and fun fact for those that don't know mo I think it's most I want to say all snakes that have that eyes are you know not slits they're circles that means they're non-venomous but if they're slit eyes then they're venomous so stay away but as you kill dinosaurs in this game you your eye starts to change colors it starts from like a green turns to like a yellow to an orange to a red and all that while the eye is starting to slowly turn into a slit and you'll notice you know oh it's a green eye when i'm attacking these other dinosaurs it takes you know five bites to kill them and they do like a quarter of my health and it's like god that really sucks but if you continue to kill them in succession then you're able to kill them much fine faster like that dinosaur that used to take five hits to kill I can bite him once and he's gone and you can just keep mowing through so you want to keep this red eye as you progress through the game because if you do slip back into a green eye and you encounter a larger dinosaur then you're <laughs> you're pretty fucked and that kind of changes throughout the game as the Compsognathus I think it's very very important to keep that eye constantly red there's a couple items you can pick up uh, there's like I guess it's like the claw of a raptor that you can pick up and also DNA I'm not sure if the DNA changes the eye but those are things just to help you progress and keep that red because it's not an endless wave of dinosaurs they're throwing at you they're I guess they're placed specifically but still even with the way they're placed you still might need to go back and have something to help fuel that predator prey gimmick in the game but uh as you progress through this game it's it's not just about all about killing dinosaurs uh this will be a little bit of spoilers if you want to know not too much but um as you start playing with the compsognathus I, I think th thought this was a cool switch uh you get to an area where it's like oh there's no more tiny dinosaurs for me to kill but you hear like some like roaring off the distance and you're like oh shit what's that so you like sneak it around and then there's a fucking little orange flower which for whatever the fucking reason hurts you i guess it has a giant sword coming out but you brush up against the flower and your guys like yeah and you're like son of a bitch that was like a quarter of my health so you jump over it and keep walking and there's big holes in the ground and you're like, okay, what, what's the deal with the holes? And you can, like, walk into the holes and crouch down. And you're like, okay, this really doesn't do anything, but I'm going to keep walking. So as you continue to progress, you just see these brachiosauruses come out of nowhere. And it's not like they're full body, it's just their feet. Because, again, you're a Comsognathus, and you're the size of a chicken, and the brachiosaurus is building size. I, I, I don't know the specs of a brachiosaurus. But they're huge, and what you do in that level is you got to sprint and dodge these feet along with the stupid orange pokey flowers and get to the end of the level but it's it sounds so easy it's like oh you know you just weave between the feet but you can't weave you're just moving left and right so you're jumping over flowers trying to duck or dodge these feet as they come by and occasionally there'll be a hole in the ground where they would left a footprint you're supposed to hide in those but you never know which one you're supposed to hide in because occasionally the brachiosaurus just fucking puts his big ass foot right in the hole and then you're fucked and it's like god damn it like what am i supposed to do but that's okay because at least as a child on this level I always lost all my lives and it's like god damn it I just want to progress the game but Jurassic Park was fortunate enough and I think a lot of games in the early 90s did this where they would give you codes it's like oh you got this far in a game just you know triangle square circle xx square circle triangle and you can get back to this game which I love because you know jump back into that level you know you don't have the same score but you're right back in the fray you don't have to go through all that other shit that uh, we talked about earlier but it's, I'm not going to say much more on the compi. I'm going to touch upon the other people that you can play as. This, again, is another game I really recommend. You don't even have to love dinosaurs. I personally think this is just a really good game. But as you progress through the compi, and there's several more levels ahead, which are really cool, but I don't want to spoil for anyone that wants to play this, you turn into, I think the next one you get to play as is the Velociraptor. 
and he was the best. I like there was a code where you could just jump into the Velociraptor level, and I always, always, always went to the Velociraptor. He was so cool. And Jurassic Park made him bigger than he was supposed to be because I think he too he may not have been chicken sized. He may have been a little bit bigger, but you know, fucking Hollywood made it up to be this really big creature when he wasn't. But he was still a really cool guy to play as. And instead of other dinosaurs, which there were some that you had to, like, attack as the Velociraptor, there was also people. So they're coming into the island, and you're like, oh, fuck, these people have guns, and I'm just a dinosaur. What the fuck am I going to do? I'm going to tell you what the fuck you're going to do. You're going to fucking jump down from the raptors, claw their faces off, sneak up behind them, and bite their backs. It was so cool. It's so much fun. Also, you can barrel roll as the Velociraptor. It's the coolest thing. Oh, God, I'm fanboying so hard over this game. I really, really want to play it. I'm not, okay, I'm, I'm done about the Velociraptor. I'm going to touch up on the other two. Uh, there's a man you get to play as, so you get a gun, which is, it's a different aspect. They introduce different dinosaurs, and it, it really mixes up the gameplay, because with the dinosaurs, you're just trying to, like, roll through everybody. It's like, sure, there's a couple of hidden things here and there, but for the most part, you want to keep that eye red and sl <laughs> slitty. Slide. <laughs> oh, I should do some more research before I talk about this so I don't sound like a complete idiot. But you're, you're just trying to roll through as the dinosaurs. With the man, you don't, you don't have that eye. You have ammo now, so it's really important to save what you have. And as you run, like, you'll start off, you essentially look like you're shooting needles. It's like a really weak rifle that you have. But you can pick up flamethrowers, you can pick up bazooka shots, you can pick up, like, a poison gas shot, and you have to manage this all perfectly because there's certain dinosaurs that you really need to focus on like little velociraptors or little flying ones i know it's not pterodactyls that's another one that i can't think of god damn it i'm gonna look up a lot of dinosaur shit when this is done but you you gotta balance it because like oh you know a pachycephalosaurus like he's just gonna headbutt you and you're gonna be fucking dead like once he headbutts you once he's just like in a never-ending chain of headbutts and you're fucked if you don't have a bazooka you're, you're pretty much screwed or if you're not on the same level as him you might be able to get away with that but that's the man he's cool it changes up the gameplay but when it really really gets fun I believe it's after the man. I, I hope I'm hitting all the dinosaurs, because this is mostly from memory. But you, you get to play as a T-Rex, and holy fuck, is it the coolest thing ever. You start off on, like, a dinosaur, like, a burnt-down forest level, and it goes right back into the aspect of, like, you just really gotta roll through, because you're constantly eating things, because if you don't constantly eat things... You just burn. I don't even know what that deal is. There's just like fire everywhere. So you have to constantly be killing and eating to get through this level. And eventually, like, you get through all the dinosaurs. And it's like, okay, that's cool. I fought dinosaurs as a T-Rex. But then you run into a human camp. And you're just like, oh, this is the coolest thing ever. Because the people... Or uh, basically, they got, uh, what, do you, what do you want to call them, tree houses? Like, things hanging from the trees that are, like, shooting down on you. They're like, no, fuck you. It's like, you can jump up and eat them, or you can take your big-ass head and knock them out and then come down and throw them. You don't have to eat everyone. You can throw people around, too, which is really cool. And, uh, oh, uh, the T-Rex part. It's, uh, I, I guess I may have spoiled the best part for the T-Rex. But, again, super, super cool. But one thing I wasn't crazy about is the last character... After you play through all the T-Rex levels you get to play in this game is a girl. And I think it's the main character in the second Jurassic Park movie. But I don't know if they ever really mention the name. Ah, shoot. It, it, it could have been. I'm assuming it's the girl from the second Jurassic Park movie. But it, it was kind of like, oh, you went from, like, the king of beasts to this chick. And nothing against chicks, but it's like, I, I want to play as the T-Rex some more. Give me a Spinosaurus. Give me back to the Velociraptor. I'll be a Triceratops. Fucking, I don't care. But she, I mean, she's like the same as the guy in the sense. But in this circumstance, you're being chased the entire time. It's no longer, hey, let me get through this level. It's a lot of, hey, something's behind me. It's fast-paced. I need to get out of here. And that's all I'm going to say about her. Because the end of the game is really, really cool and very, very hard. If you ever see this game laying around, I found one. And I bought it and gave it to my brother because this is one of his favorite games. And it's like a pawn shop. And I, I, literally, I have it here in my hand. It was three bucks. Three bucks for an amazing game. And I'm sure if you go online, it's going to be stupidly priced. So look out for Jurassic Park, The Lost World for the PlayStation 1. You might be able to find it on PC too. I'm not sure. But 
easily my favorite of the dinosaur games. Oh god! <coughs> oh god! I'm slowly dying. It's okay. Uh, another kind of... Uh, I don't think a lot of people know about this. I completely forgot about this game until I started digging through. It's a game called Primal Rage. Now, it's a PlayStation game, but it didn't start as a PlayStation game. It started as an arcade cabinet. And literally, the only memory I have of this game is back when my family would have to go to a laundromat I was with my dad, and I think it was my dad, and he was doing the laundry or whatever, and he gave me a couple quarters to play this game off in the corner, and it was Primal Rage, which essentially is like a Mortal Kombat-esque fighter, except with dinosaurs, so it makes it so much better, and with this, I, I don't know the proper name for, like, the an I, a claymation, I guess is the best way to say it, they had clay figures of several different dinosaurs. There was like a T-Rex one. There was like a weird spiny Velociraptor. There was like a T-Rex Triceratops, uh, like a Cobra mixed in with a Velociraptor, a couple gorillas. It was really cool. But they were like, you know, they with claymation, you just barely move that piece of clay and take pictures of it. And then, you know, that that's your game. And then you f went at it and fought. But like I was saying earlier, it was a Mortal Kombat-esque fighter. In the sense that it's like, oh, you know, arcade fighter, whatever. We're attacking each other, whatever. And then it's like, finish him! And all the different characters have their own unique finishing move. And I saw this. I actually have a hard copy in, like, one of the fancy... I don't know if it's fancy or just really old. It was like the PlayStation boxes that weren't... What are these called? Crystal cases? Not the small square one. It's a... Oh, God. It's a long rectangular one. I don't know if it just meant like, oh, it's older or it was like this really good game. Because I know there's several other games that used to come in these cases. But just... It, it was insane, the nostalgia that got thrown at me. I, I was like at another... It wasn't like... It was like half price books or something like that. They just had, you know, shit piled up. And I just walked by, and I there's just like a big gorilla on the front of the case, and I'm like, why do I know this game? And you flipped over to the back, and I saw the clay figures, and I'm like, holy shit, and I just like zoomed back to that point in time where I was a small child playing this game as an arcade cabinet. I'd love to get this as an arcade cabinet, but there's tons more that I'd put ahead of it. Fucking, there's tons of, for that point, Jurassic Park has a ton of like shooter arcade cabinets. But they're all, you know, like 10000 eh, maybe not 10000 more close to $8,000. If I ever make money, if I ever make enough money one day, YouTube, come on, help me out here. I'd love to pick out one of those arcade cabinets and have it in a place of my own. But there's really not a whole lot to say on this one. I honestly wouldn't <laughs> recommend picking it up. There's a ton better fighters out there. I picked it up purely for the nostalgia and just to be thrown back down memory lane. But I, I, I'd personally pick... Mortal Kombat over this one, uh, for sure. Uh, just gonna barely touch upon this one game. I, it came out for a bunch of different systems, but it's worth mentioning. It's Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. Now, for anyone that played Zoo Tycoon way, way, way back when they were a kid, or Roller Coaster Tycoon, it's kind of the same concept as that, but just much better, like, modern graphics. This came out on the PS2, PC. It may have come out on the original Xbox or Xbox 360. 360? Yeah, that's the word I wanted to say. But I honestly can't remember. Way better graphics. It's just a park builder. Like, every now and again, like, a thunderstorm would roll in. And, like, dinosaurs would break out. And you'd have to get in a helicopter and tranquilize them, put them back in their cage. But I mean, that's all there was to it. You built up your park so you could get more money, so you could get DNA, so you could introduce new dinosaurs. And if you were really ballsy, you'd try to mix them together. And, like, you could only do that with the very certain dinosaurs. Or if you're like me, you just put the entire fucking park into a cage. And you're like, hey, everyone, just walk into this park. And they're like, oh, cool, whatever. Oh, it's like I'm in Jurassic Park. And then just, like, the T-Rexes, the Velociraptors, all the dinosaurs just gang up on them. Oh, I'm a demented motherfucker. <laughs> but don't you fight everyone. Everyone did that on Zoo Tycoon. Or, like, the dinosaur version or the marine one. Every, every time you built the perfect park in any of those tycoon games, you're like, ah, this is going really well. I'm going to save my game. 
and destroy everything. Oh, first, you gotta delete the zookeepers because they'd fucking tranquilize everything and it wouldn't be any fun. But then you delete everything and just let everyone go crazy. And that <laughs> sums up a large 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 portion of my childhood but um there's only a few more games i want to briefly mention uh these games you can find on steam which is impressive in itself because steam's dinosaur selection is very very poor the, except for the exception of arc that game is awesome i honestly haven't tried to run it on my new computer but just like all the different dinosaurs all the different mods i guess i don't even know it's like a survival i guess is the best way to put it i have only put like maybe three hours into it but that was on the like dumbest down graphics on like the lowest frame rate and that was on my old old laptop but i'm definitely gonna give arc another try there's not a whole lot to say it's a survival game but in the world of dinosaurs and then the, the mod base for it's fucking ridiculous so i go check out art uh or not art fucking arc it's actually you know what i'm gonna let's let's see what the price is on it right now it is you know fucking we're gonna type this in because i want to know the price of this game right now it's 14.69 right now that's not bad, and people have mixed reviews because, you know, it's not the game for everyone, but... Dinosaurs, man! Get it up there! There's so many! And you can befriend them and ride them! The only thing I got to befriend in that game was a dodo because I hadn't leveled up, and when I leveled up my dodo, I named him Spike, and I was like, come on, Spike, we're gonna go get some food, and the fucking T-Rex came out of nowhere and ate both of us. In the span of, like, five minutes after I got my dodo Spike, fucking T-Rex just killed both of us. God, that game! It's so fun! And you can get attached to your creatures so close. Just, uh fucking. Go check out Ark. It's a great game. Now, there's two more games I'm going to touch upon, and we're going to wrap up this podcast, because, again, it's hard without Mitchell. Mitchell, come back. It's really hard doing a podcast alone. But, uh... <coughs> uh mm. Oh, I'm sorry. That's disgusting. I think I'm coming down with something. Another game on Steam that I highly recommend people check out. There's not a large player base for it, but I'm pretty sure there's a pack where you can buy, like, four of them for your friends. It's a game called Dino D-Day. What is that, you ask? It's World War II with dinosaurs. It is the coolest thing ever. The graphics on that aren't that great. I Let's let's actually see when this game was made. I got Steam pulled up right now, so we're going to figure this shit out right away. Unless I can't find it. Oh no, there's the store page button, that's why I'll look up. Oh, oh TV, you're making sounds, don't do that. It was made in 2011, so, you know, the graphics aren't that great. But again, you're dinosaurs! You're playing as a dinosaur in World War II. Like, how much cooler is that? That being said, the Nazis basically got all the dinosaurs. There's like one... Thing, not, not the fuck... Styracosaurus, that's what it was on the u.s side but yeah, i mean he was okay but like any chance i got you 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 play on the motherfucking nazi team because you can play as all the cool dinosaurs i'm not promoting nazis i'm just saying they got all the cool dinosaurs nothing against the u.s but fucking velociraptors and t-rexes with mini guns mounted on them like how are you gonna beat that oh the baby ankylosaurus with the machine gun on its back that gets overheated a whole lot so basically he's useless no. Fuck you, U.S. Get better dinosaurs. Motherfucking Axis Germany has T-Rexes with miniguns, Velociraptors, Pterodactyls. Oh, the best, the absolute best character in that game is a Comsec Nathus with a grenade strapped to it. So you're like this itty-bitty dinosaur just sprinting around. You're super fast, running everywhere around on this map. Just nipping people in the legs. So they're like trying to aim down and be like, oh fuck, I can't get them. So you basically you nip at these people until you build up your grenade. And then if you run into a cluster of people, you just explode. You just kami kami kamikaze yourself. And he, oh my god, he is so, so fun to play. For those who haven't bought Dino D-Day, let's see what the, it's, oh holy shit, it's 99 cents right now. The Steam sale still has like 6 or 7 more days, but it's 99 cents. There's a 4 pack for 2 dollars Go out there, buy this game, get your friends to play it, let me know in the comments below if you buy this game. Let's get a, let's make our own server for Dino D-Day. It's such a fun game, it's only 99 cents. Get out there, buy it right now. Whew, Dino D-Day. <laughs>
Oh, jeez. I've had a lot of fun with that game. <laughs> oh, shit. Where, where, at, where are we at on this podcast? Ooh, we're approaching 30 minutes. That's... I might go a little bit longer than I planned. I still have, like, two more dinosaur games I kind of want to talk about. Okay, why not? Fuck, yeah. Let's talk about these last two dinosaur games. Um, another great dinosaur game on Steam that not a people throw love at and also is a... Holy, hold on, before I even go any farther, I just pulled up the store page for this. This dinosaur game, it's 62 cents. For the, 62 cents for the game! What is this? There's a diamond bundle where you can buy, like, the newest version of it. The newest version, shit, don't pick it up, I played it. They threw a weird perspective, not worth your time. Uh, do they have a bundle for it? I don't even know if they have a bundle for it. 62 cents for this dinosaur game. So, let, let me, I don't even think I even mentioned the name. Orion Prelude. Now, there's not a whole lot of, what's the right, I want to say, there's not a lot of content behind this game. Imagine Nazi zombies, except you're protecting a central hub, if you will, and it's just waves and waves of dinosaurs. Endless, well not endless, there's missions, you can crank up the difficulty and all that, but just waves of dinosaurs. But you're not just like, oh, a soldier walking around, you're like, uh, in the future, like, Space soldier, I don't know what the fuck you call him. You can get jetpacks, you can fly around, you can sit up on mountains where none of the dinosaurs can get you, but then they're attacking your central hub, so you gotta protect that. And, like, you'll, they'll send in, like, 50 velociraptors, and you gotta, like, nail all of them, and then, like, one giant stegosaurus or T-Rex or something that completely fucks you up. And it's not like you can fly it with your jetpack forever. There's, like, a limited use for it, so, you know, there's a little bit of a strategy, strategy around that. But if you just want a game where you can sit down and just mow down, just blank, you know, Nazi zombies get so old, old after a while. Maybe you want to mow down dinosaurs. And you can play, I think, with up to four people. So this is another fantastic game you can play with your friends. 60 suit, 60 suit, 62 cents for a fantastic dinosaur wave game. They've actually... I've been getting an insane amount of notifications from them. I don't know what they're doing. They might be promoting their new game, which I probably put like five minutes into it. I didn't pay it much attention. But they've been releasing a whole lot of stuff and giving out, I guess it's free in-game money or it's free codes. I'm not sure what they're doing. But Orion has really been blowing up my Steam with announcements. And I've never seen a game do that. I didn't even know you could. But the developers are really trying to get us to hop on to whatever they're trying to do. But go check out Orion Prelude. 62 cents on Steam. Fantastic game. Another one. If you all buy it, let me know in the description below. We'll get a massive party together and play this game. Whew. Another great dinosaur game. Maybe there's more good dinosaur games than I thought. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm talking shit on dinosaur games. All right. This is the last one I'm going to talk about, and then we're going to wrap up this podcast. And that is Primal Carnage Extinction. This is Call of Duty. It's got different game modes, but it's Call of Duty. It's people, which, who the fuck wants to be the people, versus dinosaurs. There's King of the Hill, there's like first to 80, there's Capture the Flag, there's so many, but you're just at such a disadvantage when you're the people. Like, sure, they got cool classes, there's like, a sniper class that can tranquilize people. There's a catcher class that can, like, throw small dinosaurs in a net. I think he's also got a... F no, he that's a different class. There's a flamethrower class. There's an assault class. Like, they're, they're like, you know, they're unique in, the, in themselves. Like, you can do different things with them, but you, you can't beat the dinosaurs. They're just stupidly overpowered. Like, there's literally... There's nothing you can do. With the dinosaurs... There's the, uh, oh shit, there's the pterodactyl. So basically, you fly around at the top of the map, which the players are not normally looking up because they're being fucked up by all the other dinosaurs. Pterodactyl just fly down, grab people, take them over the ocean, or just straight up in the air and drop them. Easy points for the pterodactyl. There's the velociraptor, which fucking, it's everyone's fan favorite, which is really cool because if you get with a decent server of people that you can talk with, 
you can run around in packs. So the people, you know, they all spread out, but then you can just team up in a pack of velociraptors, run around, like jump on people. They have an ability where you literally you just jump on them and people are, they're fucked and you just eat them. Or you can come up and bite them. But who wants to do that? You're a velociraptor. You want to pounce on people and rip out their fucking... <sighs> Shit. Sorry, I really get worked up when I talk about dinosaurs. I really, really like dinosaur games. But anyways, the other dinosaurs you can play as, there's the Carnotaurus, which for anyone that watched Dinosaur, the Disney movie, that 3D animated film way, way back, I think it was in 2000 when it came out, he was like the main villain. He was kind of like the pseudo T-Rex, if you will. He, he doesn't really act like a T-Rex in this game. He just puts his head down and like charges you're like in a never-ending sprint so basically if you see someone and bump into you you send them flying across the map which granted is really fun but he was never my personal favorite and then i believe one person on the team can play as the t-rex because i think the game devs realized that oh if you can have like if, le if you have two t-rexes on a team you're just and you're, you can't win because you're just so tanky so oh god such a cool guy to play as. There's tons of different skins for him. Oh, and there's also the... Uh, God, why am I so burpy? There's the Dilophosaurus, which you can't, fucking, you can't forget about the Dilophosaurus. Even though he can't do what the fucking Hollywood said, he could never spit venom. That shit's not real. Dilophosauruses do not do that. But that that's his gimmick in this game, so you can run around and be like, Bleh! and people are just like, ah, my eyes, and you come up and just bite them in the belly, and they're like, oh, my belly, and they fall over and they die. Ah, <sighs> dinosaurs, man. Call of Duty dinosaurs, what the fuck, it? that was like a, that was a dream come true. If I got this, my hands on this game back when I was in high school, I played stupid amounts of Call of Duty back then. If I could get my hands on a dinosaur Call of Duty, holy shit, I wouldn't have had any girlfriends. I would have been fucking playing that game constantly. It's so good. But I only got it, like, when I first got to college, and then the fan base for that one also started to dwindle, so... You can find a bunch of modded servers. You can find fucking... <laughs> There's a lot of roleplay servers, which... I, uh, I don't even know what they're role playing. Just to fucking, you can try, I guess. But like, why, why, why would you want to role play as a dinosaur? Are we gonna be a dinosaur killing people? Like, why, why? Just like, oh, I'm Squanto, head chief of the fucking Velociraptor clan. I'm also king of. No, you're fucking kill, kill them, kill the people. Why are you role playing as a dinosaur? Like, if that's what you're into, that's cool. It's fine. Like, role play's cool. You do you, but you're a dinosaur. Don't. Fucking type in the chat to people about fucking I'm this uh, mystical and I ascended from it. Just kill the people. Kill the people in the game. It's so much for kill the other di fucking kill the other dinosaurs for all I care. Just be a dinosaur. Don't 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 do the rough play. God. Oh, I'm all sweaty because I had to turn off my fan and it's always so fucking hot when you record. Ugh. I had to get all that background sound out. Holy shit, dinosaur games. And the fucking... That, I guess I can't even talk about it. Spoilers for the original Tomb Raider. When you fucking rolled into the just like... You're in a cave and then all of a sudden there's fucking dinosaurs around you. And you have to fight a T-Rex but nothing but pistols. It's the scariest goddamn thing in the world and I fucking loved it. <sighs> Good God. I was able to talk almost 40 minutes about dinosaurs. Ooh, those audio spikes. That's going to come out sounding great. <laughs> oh, guys. Thank you so much for listening to me rant about dinosaurs. I forgot how much I love them. Now I'm going to go back and play all these games and start watching dinosaur movies and documentaries and digging up the old VHSs to all the weird dinosaur shit from the 90s. Ugh. Oh, I love dinosaurs so fucking much. Oh, okay, that's enough of that. If you watch this on YouTube... Thanks so much. Like I've said before, like me and Mitchell have said before, every view, every like, every comment, every whatever means so much to us. Just feedback from you guys means the world to me because we're just a dude. In this case, I'm just a dude sitting in my room speaking to the internet about dinosaurs. God. God. What, what am I doing? <laughs> Oh, but seriously, everyone that listens, it means the world to me. You're, in a way, helping a small dream of mine come true, because everyone's got to start somewhere. I started with zero subs. We're past 100 now. 
which is, I, like, I started earlier this year. That's awesome. There's a hundred people out there that want to be updated when I put something out, when me and Mitchell put something out. So thank you so much. If you're listening on SoundCloud, I'm sorry. They're probably not going to come out always the day I put them out. But th- thank you so much for listening out there, too. Again, you're helping a small dream come true. If you guys want to talk to me, Mitchell, again, leave comments down below. Social media is out there on previous videos if it's not already in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully Mitchell will be back and I can share a couple of my dinosaur stories or he'll actually listen to the podcast that I recorded. (laughs) I don't know. Mitchell, Mitchell, if you love me, you'll text me when this already comes out. I'm just fucking kidding with you guys. All right. I'll see you all next week. Later. Later.